good morning and welcome to Easter at Heritage. Happy Easter to all of you. We are so glad to have your family worshiping with us this morning as we reflect on the life, the death, and the resurrection of Jesus. This morning we will celebrate together the fact, the truth, that he is alive. Thank you so much for being here this morning.
Let's give him praise. He is our God and he loves us. He proved it on the cross. Let's sing. And 
It was love that led you to the grave. Forgiven, I've been set free. Oh, the power of Christ in me, my Jesus. Savior, praise Him forever. 
chasm that lay between us, how high the mountain I could not climb. In desperation, I turned to heaven and spoke your name into the night. Then through the darkness, your loving kindness tore through the shadows of my soul. The work is finished, the end is written. Jesus Christ, my living hope. Who could imagine so great a mercy? What heart could fathom such boundless grace? The God of ages stepped down from Cross has spoken, I am forgiven. The King of Kings calls me his own. Beautiful Savior, I'm yours forever. Jesus Christ, my living hope. And his people sing.
Amen, amen, church. You can go ahead and have a seat. Thank you so much for being here. Isn't God good? Would you clap your hands and just praise God again? Thank you for the band. Man, why don't you turn to your neighbor and say, man, you look good. You look good, Andrew. Thank you, Libby. You look great, too. And we know y'all are in your Sunday best, right? We don't wear this every Sunday. I know this guy sure doesn't. (laughs) Like, literally, all I did was tuck in my shirt. Like, it's all... No, you have a real shirt on. These are jeans. They're not... Those are jeans. They are jeans. They're just colored jeans. That's all. It's fine, but we're just glad that you're here. Thank you so much for joining us at Heritage this morning here at uh, in Easter. And those of you worshiping online, thank you so much for joining us as well. My name is Libby White, the director of our women's ministry. My name is Andrew Johnson. I'm the pastor of adult ministry here. And maybe this is your first time with us. You picked a great Sunday to be here. What I'd like for you to do now, if that's the case, get your phone out if you would, or if joining us online, uh, and text the word NEW to 903-200-4055. And that's just a really easy way for us to get in contact with you, know that you were here, and just answer any questions that you may have. And one of our pastors will reach out to you and just sort of let you know what's going on here at Heritage and what might be going on in the future, which we have some things coming up. We do. Next Sunday is our next fun day here at Heritage. If you've been to one of those, it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. It truly is. We're going to have hot dogs and burgers for um, your kids, for families. Uh, we'll have bounce houses, lots of fun activities. It'll be right after the service next Sunday, so 10 a.m. service, and then immediately right here, we will do a switch, change, rearrange, get it all set up. Switch, change, rearrange. That's, That's good. really good. That was off the top of my head. Really good. Yeah. I like that. And so, uh, but what we do want you to do is to invite a family. Invest in a family, maybe someone who you've been thinking about. Invite them to come experience the church family atmosphere we have here at Heritage. We'd love for you to do that. Yeah, you guys know what it's like um, to be around the people that you love so much. And we just sort of want to get other people exposed to that family and that community. Uh, And so invite invite a a neighbor, maybe a coworker, uh, somebody um, close to you that maybe you've been thinking about, man, they should come to Heritage. They should be part of all the fun. Um, That's a great day. Um, to do that. And all of those things, um, what we're doing here this morning and fun day is made possible by your generosity. And for that, we say thank you, thank you, thank you very much for your giving, the way that you partner with us in ministry. We call you guys, or y'all. Generosity Transformers. <laughs> so thank you so much. We truly do appreciate you partnering with us financially. And this morning, if you came prepared to give in person, we do have black boxes as you exit. You can place your offering there. But the best and easiest way just to go online to do a one-time or recurring donation. Either way, we want to tell you thank you so much for partnering with us. One last thing. We know that uh, God does great things through your generosity here um, and in the community. And he does great things through other churches and other ministries and pastors in the area. So we just want to lift all the churches in the area up in Texarkana. Uh, So many people, more people probably today than any other day will be exposed to the gospel. We just want to pray for the effectiveness for the gospel that people would hear of the good news and the hope that we have uh, and that could change their lives um, forever. So would you go bow your head with me and let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, thank you so much. You are our living hope. We praise you for that. We thank you for Jesus and his victory over the grave and what what that gives us as well, Father. I just lift up all of the churches um, and pastors that are Uh, Have so many people, Father, listening um, and paying attention to your good news this morning. Uh, Just open their ears uh, and open their eyes and their hearts uh, to see your goodness and your love uh, and what your son Jesus did for us. Uh, And do the same for us here in this room as Matt presents um, your word to us, Father. Thank you for him. Uh, Just open our ears so we can hear great things. In your name I pray. Amen. Good morning. Happy Easter. Thanks for being here today. Uh, Welcome to Heritage Church. If this is your first time here, we want to welcome you and thank you for uh, spending uh, about an hour, hour and five minutes of your Easter Sunday with us. We know you could be anywhere today. 
Uh, those of you that maybe are watching online, uh, whatever's going on, we had some wake up this morning with some sickness that are having to catch it online. So um, sorry, you're not gonna be able to be with us, but uh, thanks for joining us online today. And um, as uh, Andrew talked about, there's so many places across the city and across the region and the world that are celebrating this morning. And uh, we're excited about being here today because you can only be in one place, right? I mean, and as you all know, a good old Southern, uh, good old Southern statement is, wherever you go, there you are. That's right. And so uh, those of you with little kids and kids growing up in activities, you feel like you need to be in a lot of places at one time, but you can only be in one place. And we're actually gonna talk about that today. Uh, where We're continuing this series called The Five Ps of the New You. And uh, if you're a believer, you're a new creation in Christ. If you're not, and you're here, and you're just here because I don't know, uh, somebody told you they were gonna feed you lunch afterwards and it's Easter and in the South you go to church in, in, on Easter, right? Whatever the reason is, but you're searching for truth um, and you're looking for what it is that um, you believe in and whatever uh, your background and history is, but maybe you haven't put your faith in Christ and so uh, you're not a new creation, but we're gonna talk about what that would look like today if you were, but as new creations in Christ, uh, we're looking at the five P's of the new you, and today we're talking about a new position because we're all positioned in one of two places. And uh, scripture, the, the Bible talks about being in the domain of darkness or in the kingdom of the sun, in the kingdom of light. And we sang this morning about Jesus, our King, right? But you go all the way back to the very beginning in Genesis and the beginning of creation where God created the heavens and the earth and it tells us that there was darkness and God said let there be light and he separated the light from the darkness and so we see this physical manifestation of darkness and light and the separation of it and it laying the foundation and setting us up for these two domains, this domain of darkness and the kingdom of light, that we are now in one of those two places. And I want to spend a little bit of time, and I want to talk about that today. And uh, as it pertains to the domain of darkness, you know, there, there's no hope when you're in the domain of darkness. The only hope really is in yourself and anything that you could maybe accomplish or in things of this world. And we know there's really no hope in that. There's no peace you look around and you see things that are going on and things that are happening around you in this world and there's no peace in this world and there's, there's no peace in anything that you could find in the domain of darkness. You know, there's no joy whatsoever because as you look at things that happen and something happens to you, persecution, trials, discomfort, frustrations, whatever it might be, you can't find joy in those things because there's no hope for something better to come. And in the domain of darkness, there's a way that seems right to those who are in that domain. And ultimately, in the end, it leads to death. And sometimes that's in physical, circumstantial death while we're here on this earth, but ultimately it's in a spiritual death. And while we are in that domain of darkness, we are dead in our trespasses and sins, and we're, in a sense, dead men walking. And there is a, a, an operation in that domain, a, an attitude, a spirit of selfishness that's at work. In that domain, we're left with the lusts of our lives and the pride of life. And there is a ruler in that domain of darkness that is working in the lives of those who are in that realm. And some of you here today are in that domain presently. And I wanna look, I wanna go to 2 Corinthians. The Apostle Paul gives us some insight into what specifically the ruler of the domain of darkness, and as he calls it, as he calls him the God of this world, and as believers, we are not in this world, we're not of this world, though we are here physically, but look at what he says in 2 Corinthians chapter four. In verse three, he says, even if our gospel is veiled, 
it is veiled to those who are perishing. So to those who are in the domain of darkness, right, this, this gospel, this message about Jesus, there's, there's, a, there's a blindness there. The, the, the understanding of truth is veiled. And even in that, even in that veiling and in, in that blindness, there's in a sense a hostility towards God and towards truth. And an enemy of the cross doesn't wanna hear anything about the cross. Look at what he says here in verse four. So if, if our gospel is veiled, it's veiled to those who are perishing, in whose case the God of this world has blinded the minds of the unbelieving so that, so that they might not see the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ who is the image of God. And so you see even the apostle Paul uses this imagery of darkness and light and being able to see and being blinded versus uh, light and what it is that you're blinded to. And being in the domain of darkness, you're blinded to the message of the gospel. And so often, probably many of you here and, and perhaps some of you who even have had your eyes open at one point have had this mindset and this attitude that, well, I'll clean my act up and then I'll go to church. I'll clean my act up and then I'll find God. I'll clean my act up, I'll get my life together, and then I'll work on whatever it is that I believe, my spirituality. Well, there's a couple of issues with that. One, if you're gonna try to clean your act up, then you have to clean it all the way up because the standard for being right and for being clean is holiness. And in holiness, you have to be perfect. And so in order for you to clean your act up, you're gonna have to clean it up to the point of perfection. And so the other issue with that is you know <laughs> that you can't do it, so it's a problem. It's why you've continued to try, or you've had in the back of your mind, well, I will clean my act up or I'll get my stuff together, but you can never do it because you're trying to get yourself out of something that one, you didn't get yourself into because you were born into this domain of darkness as we all are. And so the other issue is that even if it were possible, then you would be the one that would get to boast in your works and in your deeds and in what you did so you'd get to stand before God and you could say, God, look how good I am. So in a sense, you would be your own God because your hope and your faith and your trust would be in you. So where is your hope? If that's you, if you're here today and, that, and that's where you find yourself in that state, knowing that you've rejected truth, you've been uh, hostile towards it, you, you haven't wanted anything, wanted anything to do with church or the God of the Bible and this Jesus person, whatever it is, and you, you, you've had this mindset that you wanna clean your act up, where's your hope? Well, I'm glad you're here, and I'm glad you asked, because I know you're asking. Because many of you know the passage, John 3, 16, right? The apostle John writes these words that God loved you so much that he sent his son Jesus to die for you, to be buried and to be raised again, so that whoever believes in him will not be who Paul's talking about here, one that is perishing, but will have everlasting life. And that death, he, he loved you so much that he sent his son to die. That death, if you were here on Friday, we, we talked a lot about the, the brutality of that death and the, the intensity of that death. And in that moment on the cross, Matthew records in scripture that darkness fell on the earth. And can you imagine if you're, if you're just there and you're wondering, is this guy who he really says he is? Right, he, he talked about being the light of the world and now he's up on this cross and he's being crucified and darkness covers the earth. And it is interesting, you can go and look, look this for yourself. 
Even non-biblical historians document this darkness that happened during this time of the crucifixion. And if you, if you could put yourself in the, the attitude and the mindset of the powers of darkness that operate and rule in the domain of darkness, they probably thought they had won. Right, this guy who's walking around healing people, feeding people, talking about loving one another, telling people he's the light of the world, telling people he's the savior that they've been waiting on. You finally stir in some people to send him to the cross. He's on the cross, he dies, darkness falls, and they're probably throwing a party. It was probably a good one too. But then three days later, the power of God raised Jesus from the dead and he walked out of the grave. Now, can you imagine the hangover from that party? I can imagine it was not a very celebratory day for the domain of darkness when Jesus walked out of that grave. Matter of fact, Paul even says uh, in 1 Corinthians that if they had known, the, those, the, the rulers of this age, if they had known the mystery of the resurrection and what it meant that Jesus was gonna be raised, that he was gonna be raised from the dead and what it meant that he would be raised from the dead, they wouldn't have stirred in the hearts and minds of, of those people to have Jesus crucified. Now, of course, they couldn't have stopped it. It was prophesied it would happen, and it happened. But they were ignorant to God's working and the mystery of the resurrection that God did through Jesus. And part of that mystery and part of that power that raised Jesus from the dead is that same power that's in, at work in all of our lives. But for those of you who are in the domain of darkness, let's keep reading in 2 Corinthians, verse five of chapter four. He says, we don't preach ourselves, but Christ Jesus is Lord and ourselves as your bondservant for Jesus' sake, right? We're not boasting in ourselves, we're boasting in what Jesus did. For God who said, light shall shine out of darkness, back in Genesis, he is the one who has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Christ. So at, at some point in time, God shines the light of the message of the truth of the gospel in our hearts and our minds to open our eyes. And for those of you who have yet to put your faith in Christ, you're blind the God of this world has continued to blind you to that truth, that salvation by grace through faith in Jesus and the work of the death, burial, and resurrection of what he did through that work can be your avenue and your source to be made right with God. And the God of this world works tirelessly to blind you. And I believe that if you are here and you're in the domain of darkness, that somebody has been praying for you for a long time. I don't know if it's a, a mom or a brother or a sister or a grandmother or an aunt or an uncle or a grandfather, whoever it is has been praying for you for the eyes of your heart to be open to the truth of the message of the gospel. And there are seeds that have been planted all along the way about who Jesus is and what he did and the interactions that you've had with people who say they believe, and I'm not talking about the ones that have turned you away because those people are not walking in a manner worthy of the message that they say they believe, but I'm talking about those who, who exude that joy and that peace and that hope that you don't have in the domain of darkness, and you're wondering what it is about them that they have, but you think that you gotta get yourself cleaned up and you gotta get yourself right before anything can happen, and at some point along the way, we're trusting that those seeds that are planted and watered along the way, that God's gonna cause the growth in your life. And maybe today is that day. Maybe today's the day that all the dots get connected, all the pieces of the puzzle get put together for you in your mind and in your heart. And if that is today, it's as simple as believing that Jesus did what he did on the cross, that God raised him from the dead. And something supernatural and transforming happens. 
And here's where we are for those of us who have made this decision at some point in our life. Go to Colossians chapter one. Colossians chapter one. So each week I challenge our folks to memorize a passage of scripture so that they can stand firm on God's word and it is embedded in their minds and their hearts. And as Paul tells us in, in our spiritual warfare, to stand firm on the word of God, you gotta know it to stand on it. So this is our passage for this week that I want you to memorize, First Corinthians, or I mean, Colossians 1, 13 and 14. Check this out. For he rescued us from the domain of darkness and transferred us to the kingdom of his beloved son. That's a past tense, it has happened for those of you who have put your faith in Christ. He has transferred you from the domain of darkness into the kingdom of light. Verse 14, in whom, Jesus, in him, in Christ, we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. Listen, when you're in the domain of darkness, you're enslaved to those passions and those lusts. You're enslaved to the power of darkness that is the ruler of that domain. You had to be redeemed out of it. You were bought with the price, the shed blood of Christ. You were bought with that price and transferred into the kingdom of light. And in doing so, you were forgiven of your sins. You had to be to be fit for a new kingdom. Because the things that characterized you and who you were in the domain of darkness, that's no longer who you are in the kingdom of light. And the, the idea and the thought that you can do it yourself, you can clean your act up, you can fight the powers of darkness in the domain of darkness, that you could do something to redeem yourself just as we sang this morning, forgiven, I've been set free. I've been set free from the domain of darkness into the kingdom of light. Look at 1 Corinthians. The, the, I think this puts to rest the idea that you should be doing this to clean your act up, to get your life together, to try to figure this out on your own. 1 Corinthians chapter 1. It seems pretty clear, but again, I'm not blinded to the truth. I've been set free. My prayer is that for those of you who have been blinded, your eyes are open and you understand. Verse 30, 1 Corinthians 1, verse 30. By his doing, by his doing, not by you cleaning your act up, not by you getting your life together, not by you redeeming yourself out of the domain of darkness, not by you setting yourself free, not by you doing something to be forgiven of your sins. By his doing, you are in Christ. Part of that new position that we find ourselves in in the kingdom of light. We've been placed in Christ by his doing, you are in Christ who became to us wisdom from God and righteousness and sanctification and redemption. By his doing, you believe in the work of the cross for salvation. And then by God's doing, he transfers you into the kingdom of light he unites you together with Christ. And then it, Jesus, Paul says this in Galatians 2, that it, it's no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. So the life I now, now live, right? I live in Christ and he has become to me wisdom and sanctification and righteousness and justification. How is that possible? because I couldn't do any of that stuff on my own. By his doing, he made me right with him, right? He's not gonna transfer you into a kingdom 
his kingdom of light and not make you right with him. He makes you right with him. He sets you apart as holy. And he declares you forgiven. And he's given you the wisdom. He says Jesus has become wisdom from God for us. He's given you the mind of Christ. You keep reading a little bit later in, um, here at the end of uh, second, or 1 Corinthians chapter two, he says that we've been given the mind of Christ. Why? For wisdom and understanding and guidance and knowledge and discernment. Because as we're, as we're operating and walking through this kingdom of light, the powers of darkness are still working to try to destroy us and ultimately to try to keep us from being a light in this world. Paul tells us as children of light, we should walk as children of light. Well, you think the domain of darkness is just gonna sit back and let you do that and, and be uh, walk freely with no problems or issues? No, they're at work in our life. And when we are transferred, he gives us the mind of Christ to, to function and to walk and to live and to operate in this kingdom. And Paul tells us in Romans 14, you go back and you can read it, and it says that the, the kingdom of God is not eating and drinking, right? It's not things like material things of this world, but it's righteousness and joy and peace. Why? Because when you are transferred into the kingdom of light, no matter what it is that happens in this world, no matter what it is that makes you unsettled, that keeps you up at night, that makes you wring your hands, that causes stress and anxiety, no matter what it is, you can have peace that passes understanding. You can find joy in any trial and any persecution and any suffering you may be experiencing. Because when you are transferred into the kingdom of light, you receive all the benefits of a citizen of that kingdom. Now, you might not know it. You may not understand it all at once. You, you may think about if you, if you moved from the United States and you felt like God was calling you to another country for whatever, maybe a job, maybe mission work, I don't know, whatever it is, but you move and then you decide you wanna become a citizen of that, of that country. Well, you're not gonna know and understand every single cultural difference and nuance in that culture immediately, right? It's gonna take you a little bit of time to acclimate to it, to understand it. But when you get your citizenship, you are a full citizen. But unlike here in this world, as it pertains to the domain of darkness and the kingdom of light, there's no dual citizenship. You've been transferred from one into another. And if you are here and you're still wrestling with truth and at any point in time you believe it can be true of you as well that you're transferred into the kingdom of light and you receive all the benefits of a citizen of the kingdom. And I wanna go to, uh, let's, let's flip over to 1 Thessalonians. 1 Thessalonians 2. And I wanna look at just the, the Apostle Paul's comments here about this uh the kingdom and glory of God. And I want some of you to understand if you're visiting and you're here and you're looking like, I'm gonna go on Easter, that's what we do, but if I like it, maybe I'll come back next week. And so what I wanna do in this passage is I wanna show you our approach to helping you walk in the knowledge and wisdom of what it means to be a citizen of the kingdom of light. First Thessalonians chapter two, verse 10, you are witnesses and so is God, how devoutly and uprightly and blamelessly we behaved toward you believers. Just as you know how we were exhorting and encouraging and imploring each one of you as a father would his own children, so that you would walk in a manner worthy of the God who calls you into his own kingdom and glory. Paul says, listen, 
you know and understand how we behave towards you, that this is, this is our approach. To try to encourage you to walk in a manner worthy of the God who calls you into his own kingdom and glory, we exhorted you, we encourage you, we implore you. Now, we don't necessarily use those words, but uh, the word exhort just simply means to urge, right? I'm urging you on, right? The, we use encouraging, but imploring, that, that's kind of like to charge or to challenge someone. And that's our approach. We want you to walk in a manner worthy of the God that has called you in to his kingdom and glory. We want you to walk as children of light because you have been transferred into the kingdom of light. But what many of your experiences have been in the past is that there's been a man standing on a stage who's dressed in a really nice suit with some uh, nice shoes and a big Bible and behind a podium, and he's yelled and screamed and pounded and hollered and, and condemned and shamed and guilted you in to trying to make you do something that he wants you to do or that he says the Bible tells you to do. We don't find that to be very effective here at Heritage. Many, many of, uh, if not all of our elders, experience that from time to time. And even if you didn't grow up in that environment, you probably went to a revival or two where that was the tone and the sentiment. Some stranger's coming in trying to get you to act right because you're not listening to the preacher. And so he's yelling and screaming and slobbering and pounding on the podium and waving his Bible at you and getting down on the floor and sweating and taking his jacket off because he's really feeling the spirit at that point, right? Well, there's not gonna be any of that here. All right, I can prom well, as long as I'm here, I can promise you that. I might jump down on the floor one time, but I'm not gonna throw my coat off and have to wipe down with some sweat and point and yell and scream at somebody sitting in a chair. Our approach, our hope for you to walk in a manner worthy of the God that's called you into his kingdom and glory is that we urge you and we challenge you and we encourage you to know what this book says, to know what God says about who you are as a citizen of, a king, of the kingdom of light, so that you will walk as someone who has taken on a new citizenship and been placed in a new position. And look at what he says here to close out this little section um, that we're reading today. Verse 13, for this reason, we also constantly thank God that when you received the word of God, which you heard from us, you accepted it, not as the word of men, but for what it really is, the word of God, right? So we're, we're thankful, right? We constantly thank God that you heard the message, you accepted it, right? Knowing that it's the word of God. And then look at how he finishes this. The word of God, which also performs its work in you who believe, there's too many men standing on a stage that think that their responsibility is to perform the work of God in your life. I don't want that responsibility. I can barely keep my kids from listening to me. Much less a bunch of people who got it all figured out. Mm -mm. Paul says the word of God does its work in your life. Right? So, not only from the beginning, by his doing, he has placed you in Christ and transferred you into the kingdom of light, but from the beginning and then through the transformation and the, the, the knowledge and the understanding of what it means now to be in the kingdom of light, the word of God is doing its work in your life. So what is our responsibility? To tell you what the word of God says. We point you to this word, we encourage you to learn and to memorize and to know what it says because we believe that if we urge you and we encourage you and we challenge you that the word of God is just powerful enough to spur you on to walk in a manner worthy of the God that has transferred you into the kingdom of his glory. So now some of you are here today and you've got some questions. 
Maybe your eyes are just open today. Maybe you're, there's some things that, that I said that really spurred some thoughts and some curiosity. And we would love nothing more than to continue this conversation with you, to answer those questions, to go sit down and have coffee, to grab lunch, for you to come and sit in our office for an entire afternoon if that's what it takes. Whatever that is, if that's you, here's what I want you to do. We're gonna make it easy for you because God makes it easy on us. So we don't feel like we should put any extra demands or requirements on you. But here, here's what we're gonna do. You can get, if this is you, in just a second, I'm gonna pray. I'm gonna dismiss this. And while I'm praying, there's gonna be a, a name and a number on the screen here, the word kingdom. Text the word kingdom to this number, 903-200-4055. If that's you and you want some questions answered, you want more, wanna hear more, you wanna have a, a longer conversation about what we talked about today, shoot us a text. One of our pastors will reach out to you. We'll connect and we'll get those questions answered. And we'll trust that God's gonna do the work in your life, just as he is doing all of, the, all of us who are now in his kingdom of light. Let's pray. Father, thank you for today. Thank you for what we celebrate today, the resurrection of your son. And God, that we can hope in that, we can have joy in that, we can be made righteous in our faith in that. Father, without that, we are hopeless. We have no joy and there is no peace. But Father, we thank you constantly for that truth and the reality of what you did. And God, I pray for those who are here today who came just because they're supposed to on Easter, just because somebody maybe invited them or whatever the reason is, but they're here today and their eyes have been opened and you've removed that veil. God, I pray they send that text that we get their questions answered and that we can all celebrate because of your doing in their life. We thank you and we praise you for who you are and for what you have done. And it's in Jesus' name we pray, amen. All right, thank you for being here. Y'all have a happy Easter.